story, the way I got involved in FIRST was here in New Hampshire. They were holding their first state championship and somebody emailed me about it. I brought my son over. He fell in love with the program. And when he fell in love with the program, I fell in love with the program. This is something that we've shared over the last six years um, and will continue to all the way through his high school. So absolutely, if you have the chance to do this as a parent, it is the most gratifying thing that I've seen that you can do as a parent. think you're not ready and I'll guarantee you even as a veteran coach I we go into getting ready for every season and we get down to the wire for getting ready to go to competition we don't think we're ready that feeling won't go away whether you're a first year team or a tenth year team you never think you're ready but you are far more ready than you realize actually center around the core values. We want the kids to have fun. Our goal as coaches is to try to push the skill envelope of every um, student that participates on our teams. However many weeks these kids will spend, and the more weeks they spend, the more work they're going to do. It's sometimes they lose what they did in September and October uh, in November, when they get to November and December. So we require a lot of documentation for our team. Whatever they work on, they're writing it down. Um, so we have that history when we go to competition to show what we've truly done versus trying to have everybody remember it. Um, yeah, one of the other philosophies we have is document everything. And I think as you develop your team, you're going to come up with things that work for you and in your mindset. My team has two coaches and a uh, gentleman I work with oversees the robotics. He has a networking background. I have a sales and marketing background, so I focus on teamwork and project focus. Um, the, the pop in the presentation. We want our team to do their best to wow the judges with their enthusiasm, with their energy, and with their knowledge. latest technology. There's been, what, I think two seasons now where they've had EV3 equipment available. So any bugs or kinks or anything that the new piece of technology we have have been long since worked out. And without a doubt, I can tell you that having the fourth motor port on the EV3 was, is a huge advantage um, in trying to strategize how to make your robot do stuff. We've been able to make our robot do some amazing things with three motors. And I can tell you even last year when we held off on the equipment purchase, for the EV3, our kids were chomping at the bit to have that fourth motor, so. So 
one of the challenges you will find with First Lego League is once the word gets out, there are without a doubt more kids available to your team than there are coaches to support it. That's why those of you on this call today and who talk to your friends and who talk to your neighbors are truly the most valuable resource for First. Um, there are kids, there are thousands of kids that want to do this that never get a chance in their life to do it. So um, the biggest challenge that you have as coaches, as I said before, is finding the right kids to be on your team. Um, I, there isn't an answer to this question that's really great, unfortunately. I would say you as a coach should only ever coach one team. And I have met people that have co been coaching multiple teams simultaneously. Um, I myself have for two years coached two teams at the same time um, and found that I didn't do as good a job with either team as I did when I only ever coached one team. So as a coach, you can be a great resource to help other parents get a team started. If you have more kids in your area that want to participate, that's great. Find more, you know, have them find, you know, ask their parents to get involved, have their friends' parents get involved. Um, you really want to, especially as a first-year team, you can get overwhelmed with all the information, overwhelmed with the interest in the program, and but that is going to be probably a big challenge is in trying to control that number of kids and you know and again it's something that if you take on too much then all of it ends up suffering. So the one thing you can be sure of is if you do limit the amount of kids you're willing to take on for a team. Encourage those kids that you can't take on, you know, encourage their parents to get involved. Nobody can do this from day one, but believe me, it's amazing what you find that you can do once you start to learn the program. can try to qualify uh, kids that you think would want to truly participate on the team. The one thing that I have seen done that I will absolutely rail against, do not pick your team based on kids' grades in school. This is not about whether they're A students, whether they're B students, or whether they're C students. Um, this should be about kids that have a passion to want to learn robotics, have a passion for STEM-related activities, whether they're A students or B students. And the biggest part of this, too, is not just do the kids want to be involved, but do the parents want the kids to be involved. So that's a big piece of it, too. And I'm very okay with having a 21st place team with a bunch of kids that want to work together than I am having a fourth place or a first place team with a bunch of kids that won't listen to each other. So there are literally a thousand ways to pick your team, but I definitely think having them put some investment of time into it before they ever put their foot in the door is going to show whether they're truly interested in it or not.